It's 19 hours GMT. Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to News 360. It's live on News Hub here at Tadesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. Management and students of Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA, haggle over registration fees and end of semester examinations. Six persons standing trial for the murder of a teacher at Siakwa remanded into prison custody. Meanwhile, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has requested its members resume classes, assuring them of police protection. Also ahead this evening, aggrieved customers of investment firm Gold Coast Fund Management in Kumasi petitioned government to assist them retrieve their locked-up funds. And the student loan trust fund to publish names of defaulters and seek legal action against them. Ahead in business, interest, interest rates projected to fall as a result of the low reference rate and stable macroeconomic indicators. And at least five Sudanese protesters and a member of the security forces killed in clashes in the capital, Khartoum. We've got the details of these stories and much more news coming to you live here on News 360. As always, our listeners are live all across the world on our website, 3news.com. And on Facebook, it's TV3 Ghana. Remember, also, we're live on DSTV channel 279 as well. Feel free to share your thoughts with us as we get into the bulletins. Evening to our first story, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has urged its members at the Salvation Basic School at Esiakwa and its environs in the eastern region to resume classes. Here's the case. The National Secretary, David A. Champon, is assuring them of police protection as it works towards policies and also ensure that they provide protection for teachers in and outside the classroom. Yvonne Ikwe has more. The Asiakwa Salvation Army Basic School was closed after teachers refused to attend classes following the brutal attack on one of their colleagues by some former pupils leading to his death. The teachers demanded that the suspects be arrested and justice delivered while they be given police protection. We don't have the heart to teach right now because people that we've even spent money on, they were our products and now they've turned against us. They have their brothers and sisters in the school. How do they expect us to teach them again? If you look at their faces, it's, the, the memories will definitely come back. The president of the Eastern Regional NAT, Daniel Afadu, says he is of the strong conviction that justice would be delivered by requested government and stakeholders to come up with policies that would protect teachers. The National Secretary of NAT, David Oforia Champo, urged the teachers to return to school as the case was in court and assured them of security. Our schools have become places of defecation and untoward behavior. We smoking and every negative vice that affects society is practiced at the school level. We believe that in order for them to give us a peace of mind to do our work, they will need to improve the working environment of our teachers. And we understand their anger. Today at the court, we saw the six people being arranged and being charged. Now they have been sent to prison custody. What it means is that the demand that we made at first has been met. All six suspects were former students of the school. Meanwhile, the six persons standing trial for the murder have been remanded into prison custody. The accused persons allegedly brutally assaulted a 55-year-old teacher who died shortly after he was sent to the hospital. The teens have been charged with conspiracy to murder and murder. Four of the suspects, Richard Anani, Emmanuel Mreku, Philip Okodie and Paul Boedu have been charged with conspiracy to commit murder and murder. 
55 year old teacher George Somua, a tree and religious and moral education teacher at the Asiakwa Salvation Army Basic School, Asiakwa, was assaulted by the accused persons on April 25 at Asiakwa and died on May 4 at the hospital. Lawyer for the accused persons, Peter Nimo, prayed the court to grant his client's bill, but the Kibi District Judge Alice Efuya Yurenchi reminded them in police custody to appear on June 25. Some teachers and members of the national leadership of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, were at the court to give their solidarity. Well, let's go to the Ashanti region and there's something happening you know, throughout the day. The customers of investment firm Gold Coast Fund Management hit the streets of Kumasi to demand the release of their locked up funds. The aggrieved customers want government to intervene. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The disgruntled customers converged at the Kumasi Cultural Center before marching through some principal streets of the regional capital to register their frustration. You can imagine uh, Naneku Fuado and his MPP. It appears as if they were encouraging persons with disabilities to stop, to stop begging and work with their hands and mind. Unfortunately, I and my wife, both visually impaired, have invested a whooping 105,890 with them, with the view of roofing our building. We we'll finished with our building since June last year. I've requested for this money to roof it, but to no avail. When you go there, they will tell you Parkwesi is developing a plan. They can't decide for me what I should do. This year, firm should pay us all our investments, <laughs> amounting several millions of Ghana cities, and and the corresponding accrued interest at the prevailing interest rate in the country or before, on or before 30th May 2019. We need our money, that's the only thing that we need because the time has lost and the money that we have put there is too much. It's, we have accumulated money that we have put at his office. We need his money. We don't want him to send our money outside the country for him to do his, or his investment day. The protesters marched to the Regional Coordinating Council and presented a petition to the Ashanti Regional Minister who commended them for the peaceful protests and promised to forward their petition to the President. I'll do all that is within my possible best to forward this President of the Republic of Ghana. And as you all know him, within the law, I'm sure justice will take its course. The aggrieved customers say they will march to the Jubilee House if the government does not respond to their demand within one month. Meanwhile, the Kumasi office of Gold Coast Fund Management is shut. We're seeing on this particular story subsequently get some responses from Gold Coast Fund Management itself. But some glitches, particularly network challenges, characterize the ongoing mass registration for the Ghana card for the second phase of the registration in the Accra West Zone. Wendy Lai visited some registration centers and reports. It's 10.45 a.m. and this is the Anglican JHS Bubiashi Registration Center. Applicants had gathered awaiting their turns to go through the registration process. 31 applicants had been registered. The coordinating registration officer, Nathaniel Planche, told us they started work at 7 a.m. We saw Samuel Emisap with birth certificate in frames. The coordinating registration officer explained to him he has to remove them from the frame to enable officials scan the document. We observed the aged and the physically challenged were prioritized and given the necessary assistance to ensure they were registered quickly. I normally take care of the elderly and the old people. So when they come, I normally register them inside. They don't form queue. So even if they are not having their documents like their birth set and their passport, the one who bring in the person, that's the guarantor, who is coming to vouch for that person. And I will call one of the um, CFO commissioner folks to come and vote for them inside here. 
One of such persons is 84-year-old Henrietta Amasa, whose daughter was called from home to vouch for her since she didn't have the required documents. Those applicants who had already undergone the registration process were at the centre to pick up their cards. I came here last Friday and they told me that I should go and come on Saturday. But Saturday, because of the rain, so they, they couldn't come, so I came today. Normally the cars are being printed from the head office. Yes, in the night. So early in the morning, we go for the cars and we start issuing them. If I do my registration today, when do I get my car? It depends. By latest, by tomorrow or maybe Thursday. By latest, by tomorrow, we can get it. We want the actual person who registered to come for the card so that no one will come for the card. So when you come, we take your fingerprints to show that it was you. Meanwhile, some applicants at the Bubiashi Methodist Church Mount Ararat Society Registration Center expressed the satisfaction about the delays. We are, we are sitting down here for past two hours and we have seen people are passing behind and they are doing their own from them, they are not doing our own from them. And that is why we are getting annoyed and then we are talking. How can you come on Saturday? Then you come on Tuesday, they will keep telling you, say, network and the papers they did on Saturday, there's no money there. Then what is the necessary of doing that on Saturday? The registration officer at the center clarified the matter. Initially, we were out Mount Ararat Methodist Church. That's our registration center. Now, we completed this two weeks ago, so we are supposed to move. And then we had some technical challenges at Bishop. And now the church has given us these premises. And so now we cannot write the same Mount Ararat as registration center, but then we are writing Bishop Boys Bubuashi as our registration center. And then the commissioner for that time was Amponsan Josephine Opoku. Now the commissioner is Ebenezer Yama. So we cannot use Mount Ararat for that machine. That machine is programmed for Mount Ararat. And this machine is programmed for Bishop Boys. So that is what they are talking about. That's the challenge. In every setting, we have protocol. And when a nursing mother comes in, a lactating mother, a heavily pregnant woman comes around, I cannot, you know, allow her to be in the queue. I will definitely, an aged person, I cannot allow the aged person to move in. So normally what I do is that when I register the others, I register for also about uh, two or three aged. And then the aged, I just take them in straight. And that is where the young guys don't understand. She also touched on other challenges. When it gets to a time, the system ceases. So when it ceases, we have to wait for some time. If it is a continuous process, we could have just done that easily. But then here is a case where the network goes off completely. And then you wait for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes. That 30 minutes you could have used in registering about two or three people. Asked if one could register at any centre, provided they have their documents intact. She answered in the affirmative. All right, so let's stay a bit further on this particular story. Francis Pamdetti is head of corporate affairs at the National Identification Authority. He joins me in studio. So Pamdetti, it's good to have you. Good evening. I mean, it's not an all doom and gloom situation. I mean, the fact that you're giving preferential treatment to the aged, the pregnant women, nursing mothers, good, good, and, and in a way to go. But then, what causes these system seizures and the glitches that we, we, we heard them talk about? Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. There are several things that could cause the system to glitch. One, it could be network, mm. and you could also have a situation where um, people may provide information that's not accurate, and so when you key in the information and it goes to the central site, it ends up going into adjudication, and so you have a situation where people keep complaining about they are not having received their cards, they've, they've registered for two or three exactly. days. Exactly. In fact, that's one of the biggest disincentives in the previous exercise, where you know, people had to wait for days, weeks, and but so the their cards are there. They don't come and take it. The previous exercise but was... This, this one, you are sure that, that we're going to get it in a day. Yeah. It was instant. Yeah. So why, why this? The previous exercise was not instant. It was actually centralized printing. Right. So they came into the field, took information, went to the central site, printed, and after three or four months, they came back. So it's a different system. It's an instant. Yes, now that's what I'm saying. Now the that instant, now the instant <laughs> system, I mean, quite many people have received their cards instantly. Okay. But the few that have suffered this issue of not having received it instantly, there are several reasons. One, we also have a very strict threshold for um, ensuring that we don't have duplications in our system. Okay. So you, you would have a match. Every 50% match will mm -hmm. be a hit. 
it has to go into adjudication. Those in adjudication have to make a determination as to whether indeed it's the same person or it is somebody else. And so mm. you have a case where issues are in adjudication, they are being looked into. Okay. You could have a situation Meaning where that you are investigating some of the information on some application forms. Absolutely. So those it particular individuals, mm. it may not be a network situation. It's just because there's a due diligence check going on at the back office. How many of such applications are you looking into? We are looking into quite a lot because, mm. you know, people registered in 2008. Okay. The information we picked was minimal, four fingerprints. Now you have us taking 10 fingerprints. Some information they provided in 2008 are not accurate or it has changed mm. without any legal backing. I see. So it would freeze it. We need to do a determination. Others have changed their dates of birth. Others have changed information about themselves. Okay. The system will freeze it. And others also, there's a match for just for fingerprints. So it would match with quite a number of fingerprints. Interesting. And so, so how long does it take to do this investigation and verification of the information? It depends on what the issue is. If it's just a matter of, let's say, network. Mm. I mean, the following day, you could re receive your card. If it's a case of just a 50% hit, once the determination is made, it will be released. But cases where you have double reg registration, somebody goes to a center, he registers, okay. he doesn't get the card, he moves to another center. It's a double, double hit. It will okay. freeze. That takes longer. How many cards have you issued since? As we've, if you have. we've registered in excess of 864,000 um, Ghanaians in Accra. We are also looking at moving into Accra That's East. That's cards issued or registered? Uh, registered. We okay. have this information in our so database. 864,000. 1,000, yes, in excess of that. And as we speak, we are tackling Accra West. Okay. We'll be moving into um, Accra East from the 4th of June to the 6th of July. We'll urge those in Accra West, Accra East, okay. to start getting ready. They would, okay. they would, mm. I mean, those are so West, East, Central, and uh, um, Ayawasu South. And then we move into Crowo, Ladadekutupon, Kole Klote, um, Crowo, Ningo Pram Pram, Tema East, West, and Central, Adan East and West, Shai Osudoku, Ashaman, and um, I think. Okay. Those quick. are areas will be in the next. Uh, uh, like so the, the residents should look out for that. But a quick one, 30 seconds. I know you've sacked some 11 staff, suspended five of them. Why exactly? Um, they've en they engage in activities that we consider as inappropriate. They are disciplinary issues. So um, six of our what we call the MRW operators, they capture information to the system have been dismissed. We've also dismissed um, coordinating registration officers, they are supposed to supervise the various centers. They've also been dismissed. And um, a few others, I think four of mm. these officials have also been on suspension. I'll give you just a classic case. In, in, strict, in, in, strict instructions. Ensure that you come to the head office to print cards, not at the center on a weekend. Mm. Flows the order, doesn't come to the head office to print cards, prints it to the center. And these are things that can bring the image of the institution to distribute. And for that, we'll not tolerate so, it. Thank you, as always. Pleasure. Great to have you. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on, on your exercise and yeah. definitely get some answers whenever needed. But, but Francis Pamdetti is head of corporate affairs at the National Identification Authority. Join us in studio. But the Students Loan Trust Fund has served notice to publish the names of defaulters and seek legal action against beneficiaries of the scheme who have not paid back. Out of 55,000 persons due to repay their loans, 22,000 of them have not made any payment arrangements. Here's a report by Jocelyn Wood. The Student Loan Trust Fund was instituted in December 2005 under the Trustee Incorporation Act 1962. The principal objectives of the fund is to provide financial resources for qualified Ghanaians undertaking accredited programs in tertiary institutions. The fund disburses loans to over 35,000 students in 105 tertiary institutions across the country. Authorities say although beneficiaries have an average of eight years to repay at a rate of 12 percent, recovery rate stands at 62 percent but could be better. With no money coming from government, repayment is currently one mode in sustaining the scheme. We are Almost 50 million Ghana cities is in debt. Um, we have only about 22% or so or less of borrowers who are not paying. And it's, it's this category of people that we are trying to reach out to now. 
the situation is affecting timely disbursements of loans to beneficiaries. Our financial situation could be better. It's not a secret that we've had some delays in paying loans to students this semester, but we've been paying in batches. Um, and as I speak, we've paid over 10 million to students. There are still some students that are yet to be paid. Head of Public Relations, George Ferguson Lane, said employers and guarantors have a critical role in the recovery of loans from defaulting beneficiaries. Employers should make it part of their duty to deduct the loans from source of their employees. I mean, it's, it's, it's a moral and legal obligation. The trust says it has begun an outreach program on the need to repay the loans to sustain the scheme. In some other news this evening, there's some confusion between management and students of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA, over payment of fees and ongoing end of semester exams. TV3 has gathered the school authorities have refused to allow students who have not registered to write their end of semester exams. Some students were sacked from the hall during the examination. But some of the students argue they were given between May 13 and 17 to register, even if they owed but have not been able to register as a result of some technical challenges. Well, we are working the phone lines to get on to and speak with Dr. Anthony Sala. He's the Dean of Students at Gempa to get some more into that situation there at the school. We'll bring him on it subsequently. Right now, so live here on News 360 on MTN Video Report tonight, our citizen journalist Yao Asante Apo highlights the poor state of a bridge at Apremdo in the Western region. A Pramodo bridge is in bad condition. So the highways and the district chief executive to go on board and check the bridge. The bridge has spawned for almost two to three years. No one is mine. The highway that are responsible for is a Pramodo barrier it is in bad condition. Eh? The regional minister to need to come on board and do something about it. WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. That's on your screens. Very well, Alfred. But let's now return to our earlier story brought to you a few minutes ago on the situation at Gimpa, where there's confusion between the administration and the students over payment of fees and their ongoing semester exams. Now, as you see on your screen, TV3 has gathered that the school authorities have refused to allow some students who have not registered to write their end of semester exams, while some students were sacked from the hall during examination. But others argue that they were given between May 13 and 17 to register if they owed, but have not been able to register as a result of some technical challenges. Well, that's the situation there. Yeah, at, yeah, yeah. At I mean, many students have, have raised exactly. concerns. Exactly. And that's the issue. Uh, I, I'm wondering if we're able to get through to them. With Certainly. The, we will, we will continue to, to make efforts to reach, yes. to reach them to speak on that issue. But stay with us here on News 36. You've got business news coming up shortly. Hello, other. A very welcome, uh, a very good evening, and warm welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Park Yasari. Thanks very much for your time. Now, the director of finance at Fidelity Bank, Atajan, says interest rates will fall as a result of the low reference rate and stable macroeconomic indicators. He made this observation at the Integrity Magazine's roundtable on macroeconomic stability in Accra. Interest rates in Ghana averaged 18.03% from 2002, reaching a high of 27.5% in March of 2003 and a record low of 12.50% in December of 2006. 
In 2017, Ghana recorded interest rates above 30%. Today, interest rates hover around 26%, while the reference rate set by the Bank of Ghana has dropped to 16.19%. At Integrity Magazine's forum on the theme, Ensuring Macroeconomic Stability Through Effective and Trusted Banking, Director of Finance at Fidelity Bank Ghana, Atajan, expressed optimism. Cost of funds to the lending public will be moderate in the coming months as the new benchmark interest rate, the Ghana Reference Rate, GRR, continues to fall. He noted the crisis in the banking sector was a direct result of economic instability. The reference rate is the foundation upon which lending rates are calculated. It replaced the base rate, which was the reference rate for banks, in the determination of lending rates in April 2019. It is a weighted average using various macroeconomic indices, including inflation, the BOG policy rate, and the Treasury bill rate. The reference rate is released monthly and is determined by a seven-member committee comprising six representatives from the Ghana Association of Bankers and one from the Bank of Ghana. In other news, MTN Ghana, uh, the close of 2018, recorded a market capitalization of $9.7 billion, uh, making it the third largest primary listed company on the Ghana Stock Exchange. The telecommunications company listed on the stock exchange in September last year with the largest number of Ghanaian shareholding of any listed company at 127,826. These were revealed by the Chief Executive Officer Selam Adadevo at its annual general meeting in Accra. MTN Ghana leads the data market with 13.5 million subscribers as of December 2018. The growth in data market share is largely attributed to effective market propositions, rich content and value-added services, as well as partnership models within the data ecosystem. With a customer base of 20.1 million across all the regions, the company sought to update its customers on its operational performance for 2018 at its annual general meeting in Accra. As a matter of focus, merchant payments is one of the core areas of focus for us. Um, if you can pay for any product in Ghana over the next year or so, um, be it a, 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 a shop on the side of the street, even the hawkers selling into cars, if you can pay for all of these services using mobile money, then we've really arrived. And that's the goal of what merchant payments would enable us to do. The board chairman, Ishma Yamsin, assured customers the company will build on its achievements. Now you have encouraged all these small uh, Ghanaians to save their money and invest on the stock exchange. Now, because the larger economy is having problems, the stock exchange is suffering, and now the small Ghanaian investor is losing confidence in the economy and in the stock exchange. So the Ghana stock exchange needs to be worried about what's going on. MTN Ghana share price recorded a 5.33% price gain for the year ended December 2018 with a 52-week high of 0.93 CDs and a low of 0.75 CDs. Share price at the end of 2018 was 0.79 CDs. The company remains resolute in upholding high standards of corporate governance to drive sustainable growth. A key highlight of this annual general meeting was the fireball cable cut, which has made the company lose some 39 million Ghana cities, and shareholders wanted to know if it would affect the books of the company and their dividends. According to the company, through the Ghana Telecommunication Chamber, they will continue to ensure they will proactively engage you know, key stakeholders and regulatory agencies to ensure they address this fleeting challenge affecting the entire industry. And so from the Fantasy Dome here at Trade Press Centre in Accra, Josh Quinn reporting for TV3. George Quenny for that report and uh, live here from the TV3 studios. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Thanks very much for uh, being staying with us for the business news segment on News360. For more news, you can log on to our website www.3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Pa Kwesi with business. Now, some selected mothers in three regions have given or have been giving a special treat by awake purified drinking water as part of activities marking Mother's Day. The Casa Preco company, subsidiary of Randomly, took over 44 parents, we're told, out of uh, their, their homes in a shopping spree in Accra, Kumasi, and Takradi for a treat.
Awake Purified Drinking Water, a subsidiary of Casapreco Company Limited, set out to surprise mothers in three major cities, starting from Takrade, then to Kumasi, and later on in Accra. In Takrade, shopping mothers were spotted and their groceries paid for. In Kumase, 15 widows were bus to the Asafu market and giving money to shop at will. Hey, in Accra, 15 widows were bars to the Accra Mall and were giving money to shop at game. <laughs> It was all joy for these wonderful mothers. Later on, the Awake team went to the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. So on behalf of Awake Purified Drinking Water, we are here on the occasion of Mother's Day to present this widow's might to the MBE unit. So for this year, Mother's Day, we've realized that it's important to cherish and appreciate all mothers, what we do. It's not easy being a mother. Today, we say, Mami Mo. Yeah, so for awake purified drinking water, I mean, when you think of awake, uh, heart and cardiovascular activities come to mind. But today on Mother's Day, we decided to go out in a different way to celebrate, to cherish, and to remember our mothers. And uh, through the vision of uh, Dr. Fabian AJ and an approval of the MDB Savage and AJ, we decided to go all out in three different cities. We would like to thank all consumers and Ghanaians in general for supporting Awake and then the One for Life initiative. And so to all mothers in Ghana from Awake Purified Drinking Water, we would like to say a very big thank you and then mommy more to all of you for supporting us. Certainly a very nice treat there for mothers. Stay with us here on News 360. I heard Coco say I'm black and beautiful, but oh, I well, am black, black and, and proud. <laughs> Don't confuse me. I'm black and proud. Yes, you yes are. I'm black and, I'm and proud. Natalie Ford, thanks so much for watching. You can get more news on our website, 3news.com. I am black and proud. Have a great evening. <laughs>